This is a documentary about the Stricklands family who lived at Raiden Hall near Southwold over 200 years ago. Thomas Strickland was born in 1758 of a penniless father and he went to London where he was apprenticed at the Greenland docks. He prospered and became rich. He married the grand niece of Sir Isaac Newton, Susanna Butt, but she died within months of marrying. He remarried Elizabeth Homer and had six daughters and two sons. To better his social position, he moved to the Waveney Valley in 1803, where the nouveau rich were buying up estates and manor houses. He rented Stowe House, a very old farm, with a later Georgian facade. Under these floorboards at Stowe House, bundles of old white five-pound notes were hidden they had been shredded by mice for nesting. The children loved Bungie Castle and also eel babbing in the nearby River Waveney. Eels were babbed using 30 maggots on a hook with wool wrapped around it so that they didn't have to take the hook out of the eel's mouth. Market days at the old Buttercross was a favourite too. After five years in Bungay, they moved to Raiden Hall in 1808. This was actually built in 1682, some 126 years earlier. Thomas prospered with property and a coach building company in Norwich where he bought a townhouse near St Giles Church. This is the garden gate from the front of Raiden Hall leading to the extensive gardens behind. There were a number of ponds throughout the gardens. All of these pictures were taken when the current owners, called Lee Grice, had an open day for fundraising. They had an idyllic childhood for 10 years, but which came to a halt in 1818. War with France ended with the victory at Waterloo in 1815. But after the Napoleonic Wars, Britain went into depression and Thomas became bankrupt. He died aged 60 in 1818. Just imagine them walking around these lovely grounds in their long skirts and bonnets. Their lives became constricted by genteel poverty and rural isolation. They didn't actually fit into either the rich, higher, or the lower social classes. Most of their time was spent reading and writing. Their father taught them much about wildlife and plant life, which was later put to good use in the wilds of Canada. The servants and staff living in these quarters, together with the kitchen gardens, were dismissed along with their pony and trap. We move our story now to Wellesley Cottage, 
overlooking South Green at Southwold. The Duke of Wellington's family owned this cottage, his name being Arthur Wellesley. He returned from the Peninsula Wars in Africa after conquering Napoleon. Two officers, who were mutual friends from Scotland, returned here too. They met and married the younger Strickland sisters, Catherine Parr and Susanna. The soldiers were retired on half pay and given a package of land each in Canada. Shunning the Southworld High Church, Catherine, born in 1802, married Lieutenant Trail in 1832 at the nearby Raiden Church. This was much to the dismay of her mother Elizabeth. Catherine subsequently had nine children in Canada. Susanna was the youngest sister and a rebel. She was born in 1803. She became a nonconformist, travelling to Wrentham Chapel from Raiden in a pony and trap, and sat in the pews alongside peasants and farmers. Her mother was horrified. Susanna married too to one of the soldier friends and became Mrs Moody, later having six children in Canada. Susanna, her husband, Captain John Moody, a young baby, Kate, who was three months old, and nursemaid rode from Southwold Beach to board a London paddle steamer and sailed up the east coast to Leith in Scotland. They set sail in the Brig Anne on the 1st of July. They were the only cabin passengers, with a crew of seven, but with 72 poor steerage passengers below deck. They were crammed into a space of 60 foot long, 10 feet wide and 5 foot 6 inches high. It took nine weeks instead of seven and they were without provisions for the last two weeks. Conditions below decks were totally gruesome. Catherine and Thomas Trail sailed a week later from Glasgow and had a much faster passage than her sister. The arrival at and the journey up the St Lawrence River for both sisters was not without serious consequences. Catherine almost died from a month-long bout of cholera. Details of this are in their book. They were never to return to England, struggling in the Canadian backwoods, living in log cabins which they had to build themselves, having first felled the trees. The two sisters became very big names in Canada by writing about their experiences, but you have to see Google for their biographies and extensive literary work. Agnes Strickland remained in England and became famous by writing about the lives of 31 British queens, even staying at Althorpe Hall. This is her house in Park Lane in Southwold. Agnes is buried in Southwold Church next to her sisters and brothers. The Strickland family growing up in Raiden would have seen all of the following landmarks in the early 1800s as we can see them today. Many are mentioned in their writings, especially walking on Gun Hill. The very old building, Sutherland House, a restaurant in Southwold High Street displayed this ornate plaque on the outside wall, 
which the Stricklands would have read in their day too. These are the current pictures of the house, recently refurbished, and the old sign replaced with a modern script. Living with oil lamps and candles, they would be amazed at the Sizewell Electricity Power Station just along the coast. The ferry was certainly there in those days. Would they have been shocked at the girl rowing the ferry, with arms bare and her hair hanging loose from her boy's cap? Little has changed on the Wobbleswick side of the river. What would they have made of the holiday makers clothes today or the health and safety warnings? They could never have imagined Southworld Market Square lit up for Christmas in this way. Nor the Beckles Church. With time to reflect, that when our life has ended, the legacy of what we leave behind is surely what matters. Their England in the 1800s, their values, customs, appearances and community are so different from those of today, and yet so much of their influence is left behind from their time on this earth. If only they could have known how much richness they would leave, not only in this small part of England, but in Canada too. Susanna died in 1885, aged 82 years. Catherine died in 1899, aged 97 years.